Hello and welcome to another edition of another book review. This week I'll be review reviewing Reading Like a Writer by Francine Prose, a guide for people who love books and for those who want to write them. I'll talk very briefly about the author, go into an overview of the book, talk about what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, who I'd recommend the book to, and finish off with what I'll be reading for next time. Uh, Francine Prose is an author I've reviewed in the past. I'll leave my link, the link below to the review for Mr. Monkey. Suffice it to say, she's a very established writer. She's written over a dozen novels. She's also been a teacher for over 20 years at this point. And this is really her craft book, her way to uh, introduce new writers to the art and craft of writing. And she does that by using passages uh, in the book from other famous works to illustrate points. She has chapters on sentences, on word choice, uh, on gestures, on dialogue. Um, there's a long section on Anton Chekhov about how he has influenced her writing. So that's essentially what the book is. It's really her craft book broken down into different sections, uh, narration that she feels is, is important to, uh, for a young writer to know. Uh, I think there are some actually pretty good chapters in here. I think the chapter on words, the way that you can use words to not only convey a mood, but also uh, have a sense of foreshadowing and having a sense of the right word and how that will change the entire meaning of a sentence, not only a sentence, but an entire story. She uses some Flannery O'Connor examples. I think she also uses a, an example from Revolutionary Road in that chapter that's quite good. She has a chapter on sentences showing both how you can use long sentences and short sentences effectively. I think in that chapter she quotes from uh, Hemingway. Uh, and I thought those chapters were good. And then finally, the other chapter I liked a lot was on gestures. So it's basically how you can use gestures of your characters to, excuse me, convey detail about them without explicitly stating things. I thought that that was also well done. So those are the three chapters I liked the most in the book. My problem with the book uh, overall was the examples that she used were mostly from classic literature. Um, so she's a big fan of the Russian novelists. She is a big fan of, uh, Dickens and Austin. And there's about 20 pages, uh, of Henry Green, who is a novelist who had his heyday in the 1940s. And so, uh, I think I'm a relatively well-read well person and I still kind of bounced off a lot of those examples. Uh, I think that if you were to say, tell me this is a book for maybe writers who um, had written when they were younger, have you know lived life and are in their their uh, you know 30s and 40s and maybe 50s and they're looking to get back into writing, maybe they took a creative writing class when they were in college but went on to do something else and they want to kind of dip their toes back into the world of writing, maybe this is a book for them. I don't. My my frustration with this is I feel that the examples she uses she used was kind of creating a barrier to the average 20-year-old, 22-year-old in America. Uh, she does use some examples from The Great Gatsby, and I was hoping that she would use more examples like that that are in that vein of books that more people have read. I don't think she never necessarily needed to go super contemporary, but there did seem to be kind of a wide swath between a book that was write, written in the 1940s, a book that was written in the 1810s, and a book that was written closer to when this was published, which was 2006. So I, I, I think that, that a lot of people will bounce off the book because of that. I think stylistically, she is very much a classicist. She likes, um, she feels that because these works have stood the test of time, that they work as good examples. My only kind of caveat to that is that's not necessarily wrong, but if you have to explain the plot to me and the plot, for you to, for you to use a passage, you have to explain who the characters are in this passage and what they're doing in this passage. And sometimes the setups for those would be three or four paragraphs because it's a work that's relatively obscure. And I think she could have sidestepped that by using more contemporary examples. And I think the book would have been more accessible if she had done that. There may have been rights issues where she couldn't do that, I'm not quite sure. Even in the contemporary examples that she does use, and she does use a couple of them, the relatively obscure works, and I quite frankly didn't think those examples were particularly good. So I, I do think she mostly sticks to examples from classics here, and that may throw some people off. She has a, a section that's kind of like a, a recommended reading list, and most of that stuff is, is classics as well. So if you're someone who is intimidated because you maybe haven't read uh, all the great works that have been written in the last 150 years, you may have a hard time 
getting into this, if it's supposed to be an introductory, introducing someone to the world of writing, I think it may be kind of scary and putting people off. Um, so I don't think I would recommend this to someone who is looking for their first craft book. I think, like I said, she is very much a classicist. She very much feels that grammar is important and usage is important. And she, I don't want to say she's a, something of a snob, but she definitely has her style that she's accustomed to. And uh, I think she feels that as you're writing, you need to be learning grammar as well. And again, I don't think there's anything in this book that I would say is, is patently wrong. I think to me, it's a question of who is the audience for this book. And again, if you're talking to someone who's 20 years old and is excited to start writing, wants to write their first novel, and then you put a stack of books in front of them and put a stack of uh, grammar and usage books in front of them and say, you, before you write, you must read all these. If you take that away from this, and I, I, I think someone could take that away from this, I, I could see how it could be a detriment to someone's writing. And I don't think that's really what she's intending to do, at least I hope not, but she never really comes out and says to the contrary, like, these are all things that you should be just thinking about as you go forward in your journey and not necessarily things you must do before you start writing. Um, I, the the thing the book that I compare this to because I think it's pretty much it's polar opposite is another book I've reviewed for the channel I'll also link that down below which is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont <clears throat> I look at it kind of if you were uh, if Anne Lamont was your cool aunt and uh, Francine Prose was your mom and you're driving you know Anne Lamont's your cool aunt's just gonna be happy that you got your driver's license you're not gonna be worried about like how fast you're going or you know what's on the radio or the fact that you're not checking your, your mirrors. She's just happy that you have your driver's license and is driving. Whereas Francine Prose is your mom and she wants you to be checking your mirrors. She wants you to be using your turn signals. She wants you to be below the speed limit. She doesn't want the radio on too loud. And so she, I think it's more, like I said, of a classicist and wants these things to be there for you as a writer. Uh, I will say, as someone who has read Francine Prose, I think Francine Prose is actually a really good author in the single book example that I read, which was Mr. Monkey. So I think it's one of those things that definitely has worked for her and served her well. I think as an introductory book, though, I think this doesn't quite hit the mark. And I would recommend it maybe to people who are have read other craft books and are just looking for some additional advice. Those chapters that I mentioned, the ones on word sentences and uh, gestures, I think are quite good. I think if there's a way for you to maybe check this out uh, from a library, maybe just read those and skim the rest. It may not be the worst way to go. Or if you're someone who likes having the examples of classical literature because you're more, you feel more comfortable with that, then that also may be something uh, for you. But for me, it was a little bit of a barrier to entry, and I, I wish that she had used more popular and more contemporary examples when she was trying to show uh, how craft can be used effectively. So that is Reading Like a Writer by Francine Prose. Next time I will be reading Story Trump Structure by Stephen James. I'm also slowly making my way through The Savage Detectives, so I will probably have the Story Trump Structure book up, video up first, but I also am still working through Savage Detectives, so I hope to have that up in the next month or so. Uh, until next time, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will have those links below. I'll have my Twitter link below as well if you want to follow me there. Until next time, bye.